Welcome, welcome historians. Today is February the 9th. Today, by the way, is the day in which the British Parliament ratified the colonial state of Massachusetts to be in rebellion. This seemed like a tiny little hiccup for Great Britain until it actually swelled up just a couple of months later into a full-blown civil war, the American Revolutionary War, which unfortunately eventually ended up with the independence of the United States. Now, talking about the independence, uh, today we have some more independent changes planned for 10.0.7, many of which, slash most of which, include buffs, some small nerfs to a few of the specs in the upcoming patch. Today being Thursday, we just entered a new reset, which had a more hotfix changes to quite a few to quite a few specs, but more is planned for 10.0.7. The first in line, the first in line of the changes is the continued attention that Blizzard is giving towards Frost Death Knight. Interestingly, for the two DPS specs of Death Knight, right now it's just Frost taking the majority of the attention from Blizzard. The changes here are aimed at uh, giving more options, giving more choices to Frost Death Knights, because, for example, Remorseless Winter is now going to be learned at level 19. Default is no longer going to be a talent. Frost Reaper is also going to be learned by Death Knights at level 28. It's no longer going to be a talent. And why not Might of the Frozen Wastes has also been removed from your talent tree and automatically learned at level 25, with only, only one new addition as a talent to replace these three talents now becoming baseline, there is the addition of Fatal Fixation, Killing Machine can stack up one additional time replacing Frost Reaper in the tree. And Blizzard points out their, their thought process very clearly. They say they feel like Frost DK was a couple of points, a couple of talent points away from being able to make more meaningful choices. So, to help them, to help them with this problem, we are going to give you some talents as baseline. So now you have a couple more talent points you can float around the talent tree. The new version of the tree for DK should offer a little bit more of a variety, less of a linear uh, pathing for choosing your talents and give you more choice based on the content you're running, you know, Mythic Plus, Raiding, PvP, AoE, single target, etc, etc, etc. That, I believe, is the, the right kind of change in talents, right? It always feels nice when you read some patch notes and a whole bunch of talents, for example, talents you were already taking before, are given to you baseline, which literally, it's literally a buff. Literally, the buff, this entire list for uh, Frost Death Knight kind of reads like you now have two more talent points to spend, right? It, which is a buff. It's good because you can now spend talents in other things and become stronger in other ways compared to, to before for Frost Death Knight. There is also, talking about buffs, a very good buff to Mistweaver. Now, at this point, it feels like we have been talking about, hey, good buffs for Mistweaver for the past like six or seven rounds of tuning. So the change here for Mistweaver is to Shailun's Gift. Shailun's Gift is the new shiny set of talents and talent improvements coming down the right side of your tree for Mistweaver, and it's supposed to be an AoE heal for, for you as a monk. The problem, the slight problem with the spell itself is that it only targets three players. So. Yeah, it's an AoE heal, but literally, like, the, the smallest AoE number possible. Three, you know? Two is just a two-target heal, three becomes AoE, but very, very small. So, the improvement here is that, besides also healing for 10% more, there is a new talent, Legacy of Wisdom. Shailun's Gift heals two additional allies, and the cast time is reduced. This is very good, because now it's gonna bring Shailun's Gift from hitting three players to hitting five. So... This now turns Shailun's Gift into a full party heal in Mythic Plus. Of course, it doesn't have nearly as good of an effect in the raid, because you have 20 players, so if you go from hitting 3 to hitting 5, it's not nearly as big. But in Mythic Plus now, this is now turning into a full-blown party heal. So it's definitely much, much more powerful in Mythic Plus. Of course, the only, the only negative is that it's gonna come at the cost of one talent point. 
So you have to spend one more talent to be able to get this improvement for, for Shailen's gift. Attention, attention everyone, we actually have Windwalker mentioned in this round of tuning for 10.0.7. I, I would call it a buff, right? Because it's at the end of the day a quality of life buff. Many monks, many monks have been lamenting the quality of life usage of Skyreach. While it is a talent they are taking because it's just giving you too much damage to miss out on, you had the problem of Skyreach having the effect, having the effect of dashing you to the target. Sometimes having some, some unintended movement from the monk putting him in danger because he has to dash to the target. So Blizzard now understood, listened to the complaints and is splitting Skyreach into a choice node. Now there is Sky Touch. Tiger Palm applies an effect which increases your critical strike by 50% for 6 seconds without the actual charge, without the actual 10 yard charge to the target. The amount of crit is the same, the duration is the same, and the cooldown, one minute, is also the same. So you are literally not losing anything other than the actual charge. We then have more, more changes, more additions to Paladin. So, Paladin, of course, the talk of the village around Paladin is the rework, the impending rework to Retribution, which we still don't know too much about. The biggest talk, however, for 10.0.7 is that Divine Toll and the upgrade of Divine Toll, Divine Resonance, have been added to the class 3 of Paladin, while Rejoice, Paladin's Seraphim, and Sanctified Wrath have been removed from the class tree. Seraphim was a similar quality of life annoyance for paladins that Skyreach was for monks, because Seraphim was quite annoying, it was a spell on the global cooldown that you have to click, one of the many others you had to click for your whole big burst window, it also costed holy powers, which took away holy powers from your finishers, and why not, it also replaced your weapon to look like a, a, a light hammer. So these things were kind of annoying to Paladins, but they had to take it because it was just good. It was just good damage, good throughput. So removing this and adding Divine Toll to the talent tree for Paladin in the general tree is going to make it easier for you to still get a very strong option, Divine Toll, while also freeing up more options for your spec tree, because now you can take, you can take Divine Toll in your general tree for Paladins. A few small changes to Protection Paladin, but mostly about moving talents around. What is more important is something which might even make a second, so a double Paladin, uh, mandatory for raids, because the change is to Retribution Aura. Retribution Aura used to be a meme just to give you a little bit more damage, especially if you were playing Ret to give you Seraphim for a few seconds, whenever one of your party or raid members was taking 50% of their health in damage. This has been reworked. Now, now, if one of your party or raid members takes 50% or more of their health in damage, all of your party or all of your raid are going to gain 5% increased damage and 5% increased healing for 10 seconds. This can only occur once every 30 seconds. So this means if it happens for 10 seconds, goes on cooldown for 20, and then happens for 10 more seconds uh, cyclically, it basically evens out to be some 1.7-ish, 1.7% more damage and 1.7% more healing to your entire raid. You know, this seems like it's a borderline mandatory ability to have in your raid composition. Now, you already have one paladin, your holy paladin, which is using devotion aura for the damage reduction. So, if you also want to make use of this aura, this newly changed retribution aura, you will have to bring a second paladin to use this new aura, which means much less likely a second holy paladin, more likely a prop paladin tank or a red paladin dps that is perhaps the biggest change when it comes to paladin we have been seeing in the past few weeks at the very least when it comes to meta viability in particular in the raid because of how crucial it might be <laughs> it might give an extra slot to paladin in raids just because of this change to retribution aura as i said as far as red paladin goes we still don't have the list of changes we just have some developers notes talking about the intended changes for Red Paladin, but we don't know much of anything else yet. What we do know some more of is continued, continued changes to Shaman. 
that's it. We are going down this line nowadays. We are going down some reworks to the Shaman General 3 and even more so to the Restoration Shaman 3. So we continue with some Shaman changes. We have some adjustments, some bug fixes, some talent movements around the General 3 of Shaman. What is more interesting is, however, the continued set of changes to Restoration. We have some further tuning to Restoration. First of all, <laughs> even more, all healing done by Restoration has been pumped by an additional 8%. So, on top of the previous buffs we have been covering for Resto, we now have an extra 8% more healing. In return, Acid Rain damage has been reduced by 20%. This is something I mentioned in our last balance tuning video. I talked about how, probably at this point, Resto Shaman was likely going to get nerfed in their damage because they kind of overdid it. Blizzard kind of overdid it once they doubled the damage of Acid Rain and constantly buffed the damage of, of Chain Lightning. But in return, it would have been golden if they also received a healing throughput buff. So for today, Blizzard answers perfectly by buffing all the healing by 8%, but nerfing Acid Rain damage by 20%. Funnily enough, in last video about Shaman, I was also complaining about the garbage talent of Ancestral Awakening, pointing out that at the very least now in 10.0.7, you would be able to reach your last capstone talent by dodging Ancestral Awakening and putting your points in Tidebringer. At the very least now, Ancestral Awakening is also getting buffed by 50%. Also, almost like Blizzard is reading my mind, there is also another change to the other terrible talent I was pointing out. Blocking the way for you to reach Ascendance, this was Earth and Harmony, your old Shadowlands Earth Shield legendary. Now, Earth and Harmony makes your Earth Shield reduce damage taken by 3 to 6% and healing increase by 50 to 100% on targets below 75% health. 100% healing on targets below 75% health is exactly the same. What changes is that previously healing wave and healing surge added a stack to your herd shield target, now you get 6% less damage taken on the target. So sure, sure, you will have to spend one extra global cooldown every 30 or so seconds to refresh herd shield, which is, you know, whatever. In Mythic Plus, you go from one pool to the next, you can just refresh Earth Shield. The good thing is that now you get 6% damage reduction when you have Earth Shield active. Not only that, but now Elemental Orbit in the General Tree of Shaman now gains even more value. Now you can give 6% damage reduction to yourself and also 6% damage reduction, for example, to your tank in Mythic Plus. Previously, this talent didn't have too much value because your shields didn't have that much value to use on multiple players, but with this change of Earth Shield is now very, very good. So the TLDR is that very likely I might be starting to think about rerolling to Shaman because it's starting to look quite good for the near future. These with Shaman Dawn were pretty much all of the changes. There are a couple of very, very minor changes to, to Warlock for Demonic Inspiration. Now it's not gonna be bound to you filling one of your soul shards to give 5% attack speed to your primary pet. Now 5% attack speed to your primary pet is going to be active at all times and a 30% increase in duration of Dread Touch to Affliction. So nothing too major for uh, Warlock for today. For today, the main course, the main changes were to, to Frost Death Knight, Mistweaver, Paladin and, and Shaman, the changes for this upcoming 10.0.7 patch. We will have, for later videos, I guess, some new additions for 10.0.7, less about things like talent tree changes, buffs and nerfs and whatnot, and more so about activities, cosmetic effects and cosmetic item additions, etc, etc, some further changes coming in patch 10.0.7, but for today, this is what we had as far as you know, balancing is, is concerned. So with this out of the way, it's time to leave each other on this Thursday. As usual, we start by thanking all of my Patreon supporters for the contribution and help to the growth of this channel. Don't be worried if you have no money whatsoever, you can still support in useful ways, liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel itself are good enough ways to show your support. 
You can also support by following me on Twitter. It's a good place to be notified and whenever I want to point out a few things I want to share to my viewers, for example, or whenever I want to announce my legendary return to my, to my stream on, on Twitch, that would also be a nice place to keep track of it. So with this out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys soon. And in the meantime, finally, after however many weeks, I get my trinket from the vault. <sighs> Now it's done.